Um, I run the Wild Music Institute at Carnegie Hall, which is the Hall's education and social impact programs arm. We work annually with about 600,000 people all over the world. Um, we do a lot of things that are about introductions to high-quality musical experiences um, in school settings, for families, in general audience settings. We run social impact programs that are active in correctional facilities, both adult and juvenile justice settings, um, healthcare, and in homeless shelters. And we do artist training activity, um, supporting artistry in young artists um, all the way starting at the age of 13 and, um, and as they go up into the professional world, and also supporting the artistry of educators. I want to share why we do this work. Um, we're a big cultural institution, and often people assume that the reason we would be interested in this kind of activity is um, to grow our audience. And that's not why we, we do this. this huge, huge, huge amount of activity in this, activity in this space. Um, for us, it's really about serving people through music. And um, among the many questions that we ask, um, we're always thinking about that. How do we serve people through music? We believe that music is a birthright and that everyone should have access to extraordinary musical experiences and meaningful musical experiences across all, all music genres. So yes, classical music and world music and jazz and hip hop and pop and rock and, and all of those things. So in a minute, you're going to hear a couple of lullabies that were written as part of the Lullaby Project at Carnegie Hall. And I just want to tell you how Lullaby was born. We were in a partnership um, at Jacoby Hospital in the South Bronx, and we were talking about how that partnership might evolve. And we were in a room with doctors and nurses and staff from Jacoby, um, some of our staff and some artists, and we were hearing about different medical challenges the hospital was facing. And a woman started talking about pregnant teenagers. And she said that these young women were not really ready to have children, and in addition to that, they were facing all of these other, other problems. They were often ostracized um, by friends when they became pregnant at the age of 14, 15, 16. Sometimes that pregnancy would cause a break in families and they would end up homeless. Um, and they were often living in poverty. And as a result of that, on the medical side, what happened is that they did not, these young women did not attach emotionally to their unborn children and to their infants occasionally. And we started to wonder about lullabies. We wondered what might happen if these young women would have the opportunity to collaborate with artists, to write lullabies specifically for their children, and to then have a recording of that lullaby um, as a gift and as something they could use to build that connection. We piloted the project at Jacoby Hospital. It was hugely successful. Um, lullaby has evolved and now takes place in numerous healthcare settings. Um, we do lullaby with homeless shelters and at Rikers Island. And we also partner with about a dozen organizations around the country who are um, also doing lullaby in all kinds of different settings. As Lullaby has evolved, um, it's also broadened out, and the first lullaby that you'll hear is called The Emperor of Possibility. Um, it was, was written actually by this gentleman um, who you see here. He is the director of special projects for uh, the Department of Homeless Services in New York City. His name is Antonio Rodriguez. He is an extraordinary man. He's been a partner of Carnegie Hall for over 20 years. And um, he was staffing a lullaby project um, and, and working with some young women who are experiencing homelessness. And he wrote these extremely empowering lyrics uh, to this song, The Emperor of Possibility. And Saskia Lane, who's one of our artists who works in Lullaby, encouraged him to start to put together a song, and they wrote The Emperor of Possibility. So you'll hear that first. And then you will hear a song um, by Shaler Canteen, a young woman who was in the very first project at Jacoby Hospital. She was working with Thomas Cabanis, a composer and artist we work with um, quite a lot. And she wrote Dream Big. Dream Big has become, uh, it's kind of a lullaby anthem, as you will hear, and it's become a bit of a theme song for the Wild Music Institute. Antonio's quote um, is, is an incredible quote about the in extraordinary power of music um, for both to empower people and also to help us feel like we belong in a community and we belong in a society. He talks about how important that is for, for 
young people in homeless shelters and people in general in homeless shelters. I think that's something that is incredibly important for all of us, and it's something that, that music can help us to do. Enjoy these lullabies. <laughs> 